in allah's mercy a comforting embrace bringing peace and hope to everyone's space bringing peace and hope to everyone's space the immense mercy of allah almighty الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Please recite after me الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله بسكت يوزر فاجة Whenever you get the chance to listen any religious talk or bahas, always make sure that you make good intentions before doing that. My Shaykh Tariqat Amir Fahad Sunnah, Azati Allama, Mahdana, Muhammad Ilyas, of Tarqat, Dhamad Barakatum Al-Ali, has given us a beautiful mindset. We should make good intentions before we perform any permissible task or any good deed. As I am presenting this program, I make this intention that I will present this for the pleasure of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. You're watching, you can make this intention, you will watch from start to end, you will remember what you learn, act upon, and pass this knowledge on to others. Insha'Allah, Azza wa Zal. Respecting this, Hazrat Sayyidina Fatah Musli al-Rahmatullahi al-Qawi, great personality in the past, worthy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a devotee of Sayyidina Fatah Musli al-Rahmatullahi al-Ta'ala alayhi came in his court. And he saw the Shaykh crying, weeping, to the extent that the water of blood was looking like yellowish in color. He asked to the Shaykh, are you crying with tears of blood? He rahmatullahi ta'ala and he said, yes. He again asked, what is the reason you are crying? He rahmatullahi ta'ala and he replied, I'm crying for not fulfilling those rights which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made compulsory and wajib upon me. Then that person, that same very person, saw the Shaykh, Sayyidina Fatah Musari rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, in his dream after the Shaykh al-Rahmu passed away. And asked, Ma fa'ala Allahu bika? How did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala treat you? He Rahmah replied, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave me. That person asked, What about your tears? He Rahmatullah ta'ala replied, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted me his proximity, his urb, because of those tears. And asked me, O oh, Fatah, why you used to cry and weep? I said, I used to cry for not fulfilling the rights you had made wajib upon me, compulsory. And it was asked, why would you cry with tears of blood? And I said, the reason was your fear that maybe you would shut the door of repentance upon me. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, O oh, Fatah, what was your intention for this crying? I swear by my honor, your angels brought your Namai Amal to me in disguise for 40 years, and I did not find a single thing in that Namai Amal for 40 years. Allahu Akbar Kabira. Allahu Akbar Kabira. Respect to you, Mr. Lijian. These were great personalities. They lived a great life. Forty years they did not sin at all, and yet they used to cry with blood. Tears of blood would shed. What kind of people were they? Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower with countless mercy upon them and forgive us for their sake. For the sake of such great people. For such great and pious individuals who did not commit a single sin for 40 years. Allah, as well as our condition is, that a single day is not passed when we do not sin. A single hour, a minute. Allah, 
our condition is full of sins, but yet we do not ponder, yet we do not fear, yet we do not cry, yet we do not make tawbah, yet we do not seek the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their condition was worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Day in, day out, in the night, in the morning, people would fast during the day, would do ibadah during the night, would earn for their livelihood, for their families to provide them. They would fulfill the rights of people and then they would remain busy to fulfill the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And our condition is such that we are completely negligent. We have forgotten our hereafter. We have forgotten our death. We have forgotten each and everything. And we are busy in this dunya. We indulged in the love of this dunya. We don't even ponder. And if a time comes when we are in any gathering of pious people are crying, we cannot shed a single drop of tear. Our hearts have turned so hard. Not a single drop of tear comes out of our eyes. We are sinners. We should cry with tears of blood. Whereas these pious people would worship all day and night, yet they would cry. Allahu Akbar Kabir. Let me mention you a short biography of Sayyidina Fatah bin Sa'id Musadi alayhi rahmatullahi al The name of this great personality was Fatah bin Sa'id Mausili and Kunya was Abu Nasr. He rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi was completely detached from this person. And he would remain busy in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he was very much honored and graceful personality of Ab. It is mentioned that once he had a headache and he was happy upon this. And he said, I have been inflicted in a disease by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in which Anbiya Karam alayhi salatu wasalam were also inflicted. Means the headache was such thing which even Anbiya Karam had. So in thankfulness for this favor that I've got something which Anbiya alayhi salam had, I should offer 400 rakat nah. Allahu Akbar Kabila. Respectfully, we must mention he is having a headache. Then he is referring to such a beautiful way that Anbiya Karam alayhi salam had this too. Not only this that at least if he said this much, it would have been a thankfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he treated that difficulty, this comfort in this beautiful way, and he remained content, and he was pleased upon the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he goes beyond that, he gives his nafs more hard time by worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more and he considers this worship of 400 rakat nafil he would offer just as a gesture of thanks in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What nema? That he had a headache which Anbiya Karam alayhi salam had to. What kind of people were they? And what is our condition? We cannot bear a small headache. And if we have it, we scream and we shout and we tell everyone, each and every family member of our home knows that this individual of our family is suffering from headache. We are ungrateful. And astaghfirullah, sometimes a little problem comes when we say certain sentences which are kalimat kufr. Instead of being thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every condition we keep, we end up committing astaghfirullah or saying kalimat kufr, words of disbelief. We end up being ungrateful to the uncountable favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has granted us. It is mentioned in books that a person 
had a headache and he put a piece of cloth around his head. And this was to do a kind of home remedy. With the pencils, he tightly put a piece of cloth on the head. So a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his buddy of Allah, Masuk, saw him. He said, why, why have you done this? He said, because I have gone in headache. That's why. He said, what about number of years or months you did not have headache? Did you put any piece of cloth on your head to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? But today you've got one day headache and you have put a piece of cloth of complaint in the throat of your Lord and Savior. This is something next level of thinking, respectively. Although wearing a piece of cloth on the head if you've got a headache may not be a problem in terms of Sharia. But the awliya Allah, friends of Allah, they used to think like this. But if you're doing this, then it seems it's a complaint. And did you also pay shukr for the number of days or months or years you did not have that problem? Did you say, enough thanks? And now you're complaining? There are many, many blessings, countless blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are ungrateful, we are unthankful. We, we do not thank enough Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, my dear respected Yusuf, my dear children, if you just look at your own body, your eyes, your ears, your head, your hands, your foot, Allah Akbar. Each and every limb of your body, if it is functioning well, you do not have any disease, we should be thankful every day, every night, every hour, every minute and every second, we should be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, but he has with us. There are many, many patients in hospital. If you want to witness this, go to the hospital who are suffering from cancer, who are suffering from dialysis, who are suffering from kidney or lung or so many other diseases, heart diseases. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept me and you howling. Isn't it a blessing? We can talk, we can walk. If you want to know the worth of walking, the blessing of your feet, and see that individual who cannot walk, who needs a mobility. Allah, if he has to catch a bus, how hard for him is to catch a bus or a train? But how easy for us is to walk on our two legs. If you want to know the worth of just this thumb, to just tape it around like this for one day, and work with these four fingers, you will realize what is the worth of this thumb. Do you want to know the worth of your eyes? Allah Akbar. Close your eyes and spend just a few minutes, if not some hours, you will realize what it feels like to fall without the eyes. Respectful of the Father, if you would like to truly know the importance of the eyesight Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you and me, Imagine a day of Eid, a little daughter wears a frock on her dress and comes in front of her dad and says, Daddy, look, how am I looking? And that dad is blind, you cannot see. What would be his emotions at that moment? Imagine, then you will know the blessing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you and me in the shape of eyes. If you want to know its blessing, imagine a Ashika Rasul, devotee of the Prophet, standing in front of Kaabatullah, and he had heard in his mouth that the first sight you cast on Kaaba, you are forgiven. Somebody has brought him a lady stand in front of Kaaba, but he cannot cast one sight on Kaaba. Ask him, what is the radiant birth of the eyesight? But you and me are enjoying and not being thankful at all, committing sins with the same eyes. So, ask the worth and value of these eyes and eyesight from that devotee of the Prophet who has gone to Medina to Nabi. He wants to cast his sight upon Gumbadi Khazra, but he cannot do that. 
and you realize what is the word of day is our life. Especially with those that cannot hear, those that cannot talk. Ask them what is the word, what the blessings you and I enjoy. There are people they cannot enjoy food, what you and me can enjoy. They've got money, they've got wealth, they've got bungalows, they've got their fridge and freezers full. They can buy whatever they want from wherever they want. They cannot eat that food, that simple food which you and me can enjoy. Isn't it a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? But we are not thankful. Friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were thankful even for having a headache. And they would offer 400 rakat salah in shukrana. Allahu Akbar kabir. You cannot even offer two rakat nafil salah. After normal prayers, where it is the time of Jum'ah salah, we just come right at the end when Jama'at is about to stand. Some even miss the khutbah of Jum'ah. They come and they stand and pray. As soon as Imam says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, it is as if they were chained, locked up, unfortunately, not all of them, but some I'm talking about. You know better than me the condition of Muslims in this day and age. Many of them, they seem to rush towards the door as if everyone wants to just leave as soon as possible. Nobody it bothers to offer even sunnahs, nawafil. This is our condition. And many don't at first say, stand up to salah, let alone to even miss faraid. Those who come for salah, they won't rush. But the fortunate ones, alhamdulillah, they come early, they offer jumu'ah, they stay behind, they also offer sunan, nawafil, and they also recite salah to qaddari. Of Salam, they make most of it. Jumatul Mubarak, respectively, with men and children, this is just a wake up call for you, for me, for all of us. We need to behave the way a believer should behave. We should work hard the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be. Follow the sunnahs of Prophet Salam. Populate our masajid. Be thankful, grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the ni'mas He has bestowed upon us. This shower displays upon us. We should be thankful. And the one who becomes more grateful and thankful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards him more and more and more. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me the that I become a thankful person of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you also. You will see the blessings and barakas you will see in your life. When you are grateful, I would like to tell this to our sisters also. Sometimes they seem to be very ungrateful. Always be content and thankful. You will see ease in your life. You will see barakah in your life. You will see blessing in your life. And you will see, inshallah, more famous, more famous from the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's all for today. We'll be back tomorrow with another beautiful episode. Keep watching Madani channel. Keep reciting Salat upon Nabi alayhi salatu salam. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sallu ala al habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In Allah's mercy, a comforting embrace. Bringing peace and hope to everyone's space. Bringing peace and hope to everyone's space. The immense mercy of Allah Almighty.